Hey there everyone and welcome to another episode of my Let's Play World Tanks and I'm your host, the guy who leaves his BitTorrent client up while he live streams. Yeah, so, uh, if you guys were around you caught that I had a live stream going on all Saturday, give or take, throughout most of the day. Give or take little breaks here and there to just uh, take my car in and go get dinner and so on and so forth. But otherwise, yeah, so that was a good time. I hope to uh, bring more live stream content to you guys. I actually had a great time. I forgot how fun that is to be doing that sort of stuff. So as we jump through this really laggy, bouncy game that I'm having right here, I don't understand why, but yeah, I guess I'll leave it out. So yeah, I figured I'd uh, talk about some interesting little things that I've been coming across with this, I don't know, I kind of solicited for some topic suggestions so I didn't come up with them, but uh, a guy on Twitter who releases a mod pack, who may or may not know who I'm talking about, uh, yeah, so he actually suggested I talk about how, um, high damage models and their effect in the game and that's more towards the lines of let's let's apply that to a certain tank we can all know and love and talk about a high damage model tank would be something similar to like a ISU where at its tier it's doing 800 damage compared to something like at tier 8 like my tank here the medium tank destroyer or medium tank here doing 250 ish give or take or another TD that's at tier 8 will take the like the SU-101, which does 300 consistently. So, you take an 800 damage tank that fires once every 12 seconds. Holy heck, that's a lot of damage. Whereas you take something like a, uh, what is it, the SU-101 that does about 3 through 50 every 6 to 7 seconds. So, you look at it, you're doing more damage, it's more the alpha strike damage is what we're talking about here, the huge tanks, such as the like the 183 with its crazy uh, 2,000 damage hit it can do, but you want to talk about something like that, it's not necessarily the damage output that it can do, but it's when it tether it to the accuracy and the and the uh, just greater penetration that they have, that's, holy crap, look at the just ping and light that this uh, replay is getting, I don't know why, but yeah, so... You want to look at it like that aspect, and it really makes a huge difference when you start seeing that you're getting an insane amount of um, damage that's accurately placed almost every shot, that can penetrate most every shot, and just the consistency of that high alpha that you're getting hit with that, and they're giving no other chance to break away because typically just fate would have it, that they're in getting hit by other stuff at the same time as that massive hit. So you're having no time to retreat, retract. You're just getting one-shotted and crushed right away. So it's a, it's a rough thing to deal with. And I think that it's on its own, it's not a big deal. If you get hit by, good grief, if you get hit by a couple hundred hit point damaging effects. So let's say you get hit by a BL-10 off the ISU for the... 700 average that it does now that's not a big deal that's fine okay but it's when you include the fact that it's accurately being placed because in previous times the BL-10 was known as the ultimate troll gun because it would either troll you by missing every shot or it'd troll the other team by crushing face so when you really look at it now and the fact that it's not only being delivering that damage it's penetrating more reliably because you can aim precisely at the locations you want it to and you're getting that damage dealt over and over and over because it's actually being accurately placed very long distances and co coupled with the fact that it's being hit multiple times, multiple uh, shots getting landed at the same time, you're talking some major effect on the game. Holy hell, why is this thing lagging so bad on a replay? I gotta check. Maybe it's the fact that I'm downloading Payday 2. Hmm. Let me go check that. But anyway, yeah, so this battle wraps up. We'll go ahead and take a look at the stats, and we'll come back with another video here. Good old Reliable Panther 2 and its speediness, getting around the sides of people, getting on flanks, and making a huge push. Just making a general Zerg push is what we ended up doing there. But not a bad little battle, getting sniper. That's what the Panther 2 basically is meant to do. Getting a few spots there, a few damage spots, a few track damages, just a little bit of everything. Of course, uh... 
nothing standing out except, like I said, the uh, the sniper there, but I'm not arguing. Now, I kind of like how Wargaming's 15th anniversary uh, background is the way it is. It's kind of cool. You get a little bit of world of tanks, a little bit of world warplanes, and a little bit of world of uh, warships in the background, too. So, nice little uh, sneak peeks at everything else. And it's kind of cool how the the background is the outside of the garage that you're typically sitting in. I thought that was really cool how they did that. Nice little uh, Easter egg surprise, little pulling the curtain behind the, or look behind the curtain sort of thing. Anywho, so uh, 41,000 credits, 2,600 experience. Nice little battle. We'll go ahead and take a look at the team score. We see that I was uh, second place right behind a T29. That was absolutely smoking people, apparently. 3,000 damage for him, and what looks like uh, 1,200 experience, if I'm not mistaken, 1,250. Wow, that dude was just smoking people left and right. So he must have got Confederate or something with all that nonsense. And, of course, the ISU BL-10 carrier right below me with its uh, 3,300 damage. And the other team doing pretty well, too. Just uh, our little Zergling rush, I think, caught everybody off guard. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the detailed report, and we see that 11 out of 11 hits, and 11 of those hits were penetrating hits. So 2,247 damage is not too shabby. Four hits on me, and uh, yeah, 1,000 damage, what was that, 1,080? Yeah, 1,080, so not too, uh, not too bad of a little battle there. Of course, after taxes, ended up with 2,500 credits, and a nice little... What is that? 1,300 experience after the double. I mean, after my um, my premium account kicks in. So, nice little battle there. I think we're going to go ahead and pop into the next video and go from there as I continue my discussion. Yeah, so I actually have no idea as to why my uh, replays are lagging up. It's kind of interesting as to why they're jumping around. So, if anyone has any idea as to what's causing that, that'd be a... Uh... That'd be kind of good to know. I don't have anything downloading. I don't have any torrents running. I have nothing on my network. I know my uh, ping is fantastic compared to anything else typically that I see. It just seems to be jumping around for some odd reason. It's not frame rate issues that I can see. But hey, well, whatever. We'll just have to, uh, we'll just deal with it for now and make the best of it. So hopefully it's not too, too bad for you guys. I do apologize. I'll start doing more live stuff instead, and that will take care of that issue. But yeah, so anyway, I was talking about the high damage values and um, how things just all synced out together and how that's all working and so on and so forth. But anyway, so as a, this might be a good example, not exactly the best, but hey, I mean, it's a, the fact that you're able to apply very high damage numbers consistently is a huge thing. Now, in the past, before, let's say the past two, three patches, those high damage guns used to be offset by their accuracy. Yeah, you could do 8 900 damage in a BL-10, but you also had a very low chance of hitting at long ranges. Yeah, close ranges was one thing, but long ranges, not so much. So... With that said, that's really been changed with this accuracy buff. It really made the high damage guns that much more accurate. That's why you usually would see a Jagdtiger being taken over like a, um, a, a 704 because the Jagdtiger, while it's uh, not as much alpha damage as the BL-10 on the 704, the accuracy of the Jagdtiger is more reliable and more dependable. You wouldn't have to deal with that continual effect of uh, hitting one out of every X number of shots because it was just so skittish, for lack of better terms, of hitting anything. Now you get the nice, lovely ability that, you know, the Jagdtiger has, but on the BL-10. So, I mean, the Jagdtiger is now even more super accurate than what it was. You can actually aim at individual hatches millions of miles away. But in the past, it used to be almost strictly the fact that you had... A, um, how should I word this properly? It used to be you traded alpha for accuracy. There was no way around it. That was, you got either or, not both. Now, it seems that you get a little bit of both, and those tanks that relied so much on accuracy, while they still have a very increased level of accuracy, they don't have that damage, the alpha, to keep up. So you're starting to see a lot of the uh, continual hitters over and over going into more of, a, I don't want to call it a kill stealing mode, because that's I mean, even though kind of they are kill stealing, it's more of a cleanup duty. So let's say something like a Centurion or a uh, yeah, what whatever's the top of a Centurion class, that seems to be 
going into more of a, um, it, the fast firing rate is now going as a cleanup duty instead of the more dependable, I can hit you multiple, multiple times from a longer range or medium range. It's now quite the opposite. It's now, those tanks now can only act as a, what as I was saying, can only act as a cleanup duty. They come in, you do your heavy damage with that BL-10, or you do your heavy damage with my Yag Tiger, or my JT Tiger, or, <laughs> I can't speak, my uh, GW Tiger, or anything like that. Your heavy hitters do that initial punch, and then your uh, light hitters that can rapid fire come in and clean up. Now, again, that might be viewed as uh, kill stealing, but that's more along the lines of actually just teamwork in general. You want to try and pre-plan those things so that you have, like, your BL-10 come in, do a heavy hit right away, and then follow it up with, like, a, a, a Yag Panther, uh, yeah, Yag Panther 2, or a Panther, no, well, Yag Panther 2 is not a good example, but a Panther 2 follow up with another hit right after it, so that way you're doing cleanup duty right on top of it, and you're finishing off and pulling that gun off the market, or off the battlefield. And that's just something that's, uh, it's teamwork, it's learned, it does make a huge difference if you can actually get that to work, and of course the whole, um, being able to do certain, you know, combinations makes a big difference. Instead of, it, it, like I was saying, in the past, you used to be able to get away with, you hit with a singular um, heavy hit and they'd retreat and you'd never see it again. Or you'd fire your heavy hit and miss, no big deal. Now it's, I think that it wasn't the high damage that killed, you know, that sort of a aggressive play. I, I want to say it's more of the fact of the aggressive play of the game has died off because the aggressive play is really no longer in the game. It's now very suited, or at least in my uh, aspects, that the game has really changed up in the fact that you want to almost do more of a uh, reactive sort of play style. I mean, I've, I've touched upon this recently as well, and it's still something I'm trying, I'm really struggling with. It, like this whole month-long event of getting 30 kills gets you uh, 300,000 credits. It's rough for me. That is real rough because I'm not one who sits around. I'm one who is a very uh, aggressive player, and the game style does not suit aggressiveness at all. You are better off doing a defensive gameplay or reactive gameplay, see where things are happening, than go and assist there, as opposed to being the one who runs out there and does that huge, heavy, nasty uh, damage right up front and causing them all to react, because now the accuracy and the damage models of the game, you have those those highly accurate guns now, like a T-30 is now super accurate. And so you can't get out there and rely on the fact that they're going to miss you if you're at a high rate of speed, or they're going to, um, good chance of them bouncing off you because they can't really get a good beat on your weak point. Now they can. And it makes a huge difference in the game. So it's not just one thing or the other. It's the combination of all that together that really causes that. So as this game winds on, I'm just going to say this before it goes on. It's something that I'm still learning to deal with. And I mean, I'm not alone. I know a lot of people are out there dealing with the same issue. And so uh, it's you're not alone in that fact. It's not ruining the game. I would never say that it's ruining the game. It's just causing a new sort of gameplay to develop and that's cool and of course there are things coming down the road there that'll change that people are gonna have to start learning to adapt to a uh, severe bullet drop here shortly because there's going to be new aiming models implemented into the game down the road so but that's a different story for a different time i'm gonna wrap this one up by talking about the stats i want to kind of shorten these videos up a bit so i can produce more instead of just like one a week i want to do like two or three a week so going to end it off with the stats of this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will uh, go through that, and I'll cut it off. So thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the stats. The more and more that I play this game after these couple patches, the more and more I think I'm actually becoming a much better artillery player than I am any other tank. And it's kind of funny that way, because I never thought I was a good artillery player. But yet, I consistently do well in artillery. Well, hold on here. I either do very terrible and get zero damage games in my artillery, or I do very good and do games like this in my artillery. So it's it's one side of the spectrum or the other, nothing in between. And I think that's kind of how artillery is going nowadays, is either you're going to do very well in it or not good at all. And I think kind of weeds people out from playing so much of it. But, I mean, I think that, you know, I'm slowly losing my ability to play TDs and uh, mediums and heavies. I might be more of an artillery player, and I never thought I would be. So I might have to try and pick up some new stuff like the British artillery or something like that. 
So maybe I'll take a look at them at some point in time here in the near future. Anyway, 3,700 credits, 2,186 experience, killing four people, and of course, smoking the living daylights out of a handful of them with that nasty drop of a shell. The AP really is the way to go. It's, uh, um, I like to carry, I'd say, maybe one-third AP, and then two-thirds HE. Use them in the initial battle, because in that way... Uh, you're not wasting AP on targets that are already down below half health. You can actually splash them to death. Whereas in the early battle, you want to hit people for maximum amount of damage, leaving it so that your teammates can come in and poke people down real quick. Like I've had plenty of battles where I was to hit like a um, Object 704 with this guy, and he'll be left with like 50 hit points, and then a teammate just comes in, swarms him, takes out the 50 hit points. So it's beautiful when that sort of thing happens. Anyway... Uh, nothing I can really see from here that's interesting. I got Reaper, which is kind of cool for artillery. But yeah, so we'll go ahead and move on to the team score, in which I did 3,000 damage. 3,180 damage. So I did uh, second most damage, according to this thing, right underneath that A100. But experience-wise, somewhere in the middle of the pack. Not a big deal. Looks like everyone did pretty well, but I uh, just enjoyed the fact that I smoked people artillery. So I guess we got lucky somehow, someway, just... Better tactics, maybe. Very good E100 player, maybe. But then again, their E100 player is fantastic as well. So a little bit of luck here and there. And just, you know, things, I guess, swung our way a little bit. I guess artillery did help. So nothing that really stands out here. We'll go ahead and hop in the detailed report. And we see that, yeah, so seven shots fired, four of them hitting, one getting splash damage, and four penetrating hits. So that was the damage there. One hit hit me, of course. And I also got a splash damage as well against me that was that artillery trying to counter battery me lucky he missed the uh, direct hit otherwise I would be dead very early in the game so other than that there is nothing I really see here that stands out the uh, credits is nice but you know I still don't think that they improved the uh, what do you want to call it the experience and credit earning enough on the artillery feels that it's still a little weak, but maybe that's just the battle just so happened to work out that way and it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. I've had earlier battles, like earlier this week, where I saw in, in the sub-1000s for my experience, and that was after I did like four or five kills for about 2,000 damage in lower tiers. So who knows, maybe it was just a bad combination of things or damaging low-tier players where I wouldn't get as many uh, experience and credits for killing them. But, yeah, needless to say. Anyway, so I want to thank you guys for tuning in this episode. I know it's a kind of a short one compared to my normal. I want to try and keep it sub-20. Definitely try and keep it around 15. Figure two battles gets me there. I'm trying to figure out a good format that works. Or also good topics to talk about. So, I mean, if you guys have anything, feel free to suggest them. And I'll, uh, I'll see if I can come up with something to, to uh, chat about for those. Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in, and I will catch you in the next episode.